<laughs> We've done it, you guys. We're champions of the world. Come on! <laughs> I wanted this trophy so bad, you guys. Honestly, like, to even get in this tournament, yeah? The things you have to do to get here. And my god, this game was hard. This game was difficult. Palmeiras, I have to give so much respect to for making this game what it was. My god, I am so gassed. I'm so happy. I'm so excited, you guys, to call ourselves champions of the world. We've secured every single cup trophy we can. This is history, you guys. This is a moment to definitely relish. And let's hope that we can come back here again with the squads. <laughs> this game was decided today by our two most expensive players throughout our entire history, Romelu Lukaku and Kai Havertz. And my God, Kai Havertz, I swear this guy is like not even a human being sometimes, bro. Like, my God, do you see that composure at the end? The way he took that penalty was just, dis dis it was disgusting, my God. That composure at the end. Palmeiras players in players' faces, howling the referee, doing everything in their power to put that pressure there. And Kai did not react at all. And to finish that penalty off with that composure, that style, that grace. Please, for the love of all things football, please, we must unlock this guy's full potential. There's a, a ridiculous player here. The amount of different positions and roles this guy played throughout the entire game today. Like, even before that move. It was Kai Havertz who received the ball from deep. Received from the centre-backs. And he kicks out of that move himself. Oh my god. <laughs> I feel so drained off of this game. Like, I don't know why I felt the tension so bad. But it's been a long time since we played a game like this. Where we've had to fight. Work hard. Getting fouled and fouled and fouled and fouled. You know, it was, it was stupidly difficult. But in the end, the quality shone through. The players came through, you could tell from the first minute this game started that the players knew exactly what they set out to do today and they got it done. Uh, Roman Abramovich must be an incredibly happy and excited man. So, you know, the way he's taken this club since he's, uh, you know, bought us all them years back, you guys. <sighs> I need a breather right now, like. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so gassed you guys in today's review. Of course, I need to break down the game. The players, the moments, the tactics, all that good stuff. Hope you guys enjoy. For the love of God, smash your head out of this live button. We've won the Club World Cup, y'all. We are the world champions, for God's sake. I need to get as many lives as possible today. But, you know, let's let's start with things now. <laughs> Let me try to collect my composure a bit. I need to just like, relax the hell down right now. But, you know, Palmeiras, I was expecting an incredibly difficult, difficult opponent. And this was never going to be a game in which we were destined to win this 3-4-0. It doesn't matter about the quality of the opposition we're playing against. You know, these guys said from before this game, they knew they'd be playing against us in the final. And this was a team today that put everything that they had in their power to nullify us. And for large parts of this game, they did win that tactical battle. For me, sometimes I feel like for us to go to that next level as a football club, we need to find a way to counter those teams that set up using those mid-block tactics in which they keep their blocks very compact, where they allow us to have the ball out wide. When we find a solution to fully nullify those teams tactically, then we have a squad that can challenge every single team out there. We need to get this right, you guys. That is the final piece of this puzzle, final piece of this jigsaw, because especially in that first half, I felt like Palmeiras' game plan was working to great effect. Um, you know, a lot of times they wanted us to have the ball in wide areas because when we don't have the natural wingbacks in the team, no like Reese James or Ben Gill, or players who play forward, who play aggressive, who find those angles, that have the distribution and quality to affect the game like that, you know, we can fall into the trap of playing passes backwards too much. And we've got a team that's just like putting so many men in them central areas where we're constantly playing passes backwards where the centre backs in the end were basically acting like playmakers trying to make things happen because I mean Phil couldn't get in the game. We're getting overcrowded. We're getting overcrowded between the lines as well too. It makes us so static, so slow. We can't create any 3v2s or 2v1s or any overloads as well. And it creates a game in which we play in front of defences all the time. And this is why we need to find a solution against a lot of teams who are very happy to park the bus in this manner. You know, Palmeiras, you know, they were creating some very dangerous moments on the counter attack and behind, you know, attacking those spaces in behind both our wing backs at times. This was a tough team. And from the moment this game started, you saw the way that entire team huddled together. 
because they knew today that they needed something greater than football to overcome us and get a win for them. The most notable thing of that first half was not only the dangerous counter-attacks they were creating, but Mason Mount coming off as well too, and the introduction of Christian Pulisic. So of course, the second half means to see something greater from the team. And I felt like this is where Thomas Tuchel came in and really helped change the things tactically in our favor. Now, the big thing was Havertz and Lukaku played up front together. And by doing that, it meant that Lukaku didn't have to be isolated and removed from the play. You know, he was getting outmanned and overcrowded in those central positions, you know, getting outmanned by bare Palmeiras midfield players and defenders. And when he's playing like this, he's relying exclusively on service from the team. And it was very hard to even create opportunities to deliver quality service. So with that second half change of Havertz and Lukaku playing as a front two, this meant that both these guys could drift further wide. And by drifting further wide, we were able to create them triangles, which was very important in creating the overloads, of course, stretch those defensive blocks of Palmeiras. On the left-hand side, we saw a uh, cover pushing forward with Havertz, um, hudson Odoi making that triangle on the left. On the right-hand side, Lukaku, Aspilicueta, and N'Golo Kante. And was there any surprise that in the end, you know, hudson Odoi puts in an unreal cross, and he owed us a cross, man, because some of the distribution from him in that game today was not on point. A few times when he was isolated 1v1, you know, I feel like he's not able to consistently get past his man. I do have more observations on this, but I don't want to get into it right now. I want to focus solely on the other details in this game, but that cross he put in for Lukaku, it's very simple. With Lukaku, we signed him because he is clinical. We can't forget that. Last season, with opportunities like that, we were missing them left, right, and center. Lukaku's already shown lots of glimpses that he doesn't need 10 shots on goal to score a goal. We can't forget why we signed him. That cross, that header, that's two goals in the Club World Cup. And those two goals helped us, of course, in this position we're in right now. Ten years back with Fernando Torres, he was missing tons of opportunities left, right and centre for us. This is the difference right now that we have in Lukaku. And let's hope that maybe we can see more of Havertz and Lukaku playing as like a front two, man. Because for me, this makes the most sense. I'd be surprised that we haven't seen them consistently together. We can't forget these are two most expensive players for our entire history. I'd like to think I can see these guys playing more. And if we do, I'd expect more special things to come. But literally after going the first goal up and thinking this is what we needed, Palmeiras is going to open up. And then literally a few minutes after that, in very uncharacteristic fashion, uh, Thiago Silva was in a, a awkward position, giving away a handball. And all of a sudden, they're back in the game with a penalty scored by Vega. Um, and then, I, I guess it was never going to be that simple. You just knew that this game was going to get, keep getting fought and battled left, right and centre. It wasn't really any surprise in the end that this game went all the way to extra time. Um, you know, there were not as many dangerous moments. You know, before the extra time uh, moment came, we saw that Lukaku came off uh, Vernov and we saw Saul come on as well. And for me, we definitely needed to... Uh, you know, boost the intensity. This was a game in which we had to really run, fight, work very, very hard, and I have to give maximum credit to the team and the players today. Extra time comes, and Thomas Tuchel makes some further changes in the game by bringing on Malang Sar and Hakim Ziyech, as I think Christensen had like a bit of a, a cramp situation, and I think the back four, in a sense, didn't necessarily give us like a new dimension offensively. Not really, because Palmeiras were like that immovable object in the middle, in which they weren't looking to leave their blocks, regardless of what position we use, or how many men we flooded forward. But um, I know there was some criticism of maybe Kepa not coming on, but I'm just thinking, I'm sorry, in games like this, if you're going to be playing for penalties, a big club like us, for God's sake, then you're giving that mental advantage to Palmeiras. Do you really think a team like them haven't been preparing for penalties? They've been extremely happy. They would have gone all the way because that's the way they set up today was to go all the way. So you can't match up with that same meek, weak energy. You need to play to win games like this. And thank God that opportunity came near the end. Um, wow, that penalty, it was, uh, it was such a crazy moment near the game. A part of me feels, you know, of course, a little bit unfortunate for that uh, defender, um, Luan. Uh, it was like a point-blank range shot that came from, I think, Aspilicueta or was it Pulisic or someone like that. And in situations like that, so close, like, it's kind of natural to, like, reactively to put your arms up, but it doesn't matter. I mean, the same thing happens to us with the equalizer as well, too. And after that, you guys have a steps up and the rest was literally history. Um, <laughs> but that wasn't all. You thought by by then the game would be over, but Palmeiras, I guess, in sh sheer desperation to try and force something in that game. They were literally playing in our favour, to be fair, giving away constant non-stop fouls, 
uh, free kicks and um, you know playing very rough but I think we all knew that they were a very rough team to begin with and in the end you know one of the Luan's game just literally went to muds. Uh, he got sent off, of course, Havertz again, um, running on the end of an amazing pass from Hakim Ziyech. And I just thought his introduction in particular, some of the deliveries this guy was playing in the books, cutting inside of that left foot. I mean, I don't know why it's taken 12 months to see him play in his best position, but this is why he must play there consistently because he just creates and makes things happen. And in the end, you guys, that was enough. We, we fought, we battled, and we came through to lift the club world cup becoming world champions and oh, flipping now i feel like so drained and i just feel like i've got mad energy after a game like that but you know before i go i want to just talk about maybe a few individual performances uh let's talk about angolo Kante. um it wasn't necessarily the greatest game from him maybe some fitness concerns i'm i'm saying this not to make an excuse but i've just been in this situation so many times and normally when Kante isn't like as imperious like best there's always some type of fitness issue. I'd say credit to Palmeiras because they really put pressure on him when this guy was receiving on the ball, like time and time again. And I've never seen Kante get dispossessed so much in a game before. Um, you know, sometimes some of the forward passing was a bit iffy, but then he showed a, a few nice, you know, bits of skill and a nice change of direction. And he tried to play forward, but this was not necessarily the best game from him. I need to give uh, credit to Chris and Pulisic. Uh, I thought he came on and he. You know, he looked to work, he was hungry, and he was very, very brave. I mean, constantly getting kicked from behind, fouled, pushed over. Like, to constantly, like, get that type of abuse and punishment throughout a game. Listen, it does take a toll on you, but the fact that he is so willing every single time to be positive on the ball. And in that second half, when he was, like, playing on the left wing with plays in hudson Adoy, like, just some of the skills, some of the dribbles in field, like, this is the Pulisic I think we all want to see more of. And to see more of this Pulisic, Play him down the left-hand side a lot more. Please, 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 please. And, you know, of course, you know, can't forget uh, another key player in this game today. And I have to give big credit to Lukaku. Um, again, you know, all eyes on him. A lot of, like, for me, just over-the-top pressure and criticism plays so at times. I think he needs to relax a bit. Um, you know, we can't play this positional play and then still expect the strikers to be, like, free-scoring like we're using a Liverpool system. It doesn't work like that. I, I still feel like we are maybe a window away from fully, like, addressing all the bad balance issues in the team currently but from get barely getting any service you know he had a big impact in this tournament and his goals helps us secure this in the end so massive credit goes to Rom and let's hope he brings his form back now continues it in the league and of course against Liverpool in the Carabao Cup in like two weeks time but regardless you guys I think that's everything I need to say about the game right now like I'm so overjoyed like it's such a proud moment to feel as a fan that you know every trophy out there we have secured but like part of that special special elite right now and yeah let's hope that you know we can continue to push on this season and continue to collect as much silver as possible so you guys on that note I'm going to wrap things up keep things moving thank you for watching I'm in EFC this is Blue Lines TV and I'll catch you guys later cool <laughs>